Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Hello, good people of God. Are you out there? I know it's a holiday weekend and all that good stuff. But we have business to close out today. Hey, glory. God has been so good to us. Amen. He has been so faithful. I hope everybody had a wonderful uh Fourth of July, Independence. Hey, Erica, Independence Holiday Celebration. Yay, sis, how you doing, Daphne? Good to see you. Well, at least on here. Good, you know, not, we ain't seeing, seeing each other, but love you, sis. Hey, daughter, how you doing? Hope my babies are well. You and the family, love y'all. So we have been, I don't know whether you have been able to join us or not. Um, and if you didn't join us, it's no, it's no big deal. Um, it's not a problem, but I just wanted to come on and close us out from the consecration that we've been on. God has been, God has been more than wonderful. When I, when, when I say to me, to me, and I can't talk about, I've, I've heard from a few people that, you know, this time really blessed them um, of seeking God and seeking God's face. Hey, Andrea, seeking God's face and, you know, just, you know, putting down certain things and, you know, just really going hard after him for these 21 days. I, I'm just going to tell you, uh, the first week was like uh, warfare. I mean, there was some serious warfare, but God was faithful. You know, if we seek him, we'll find him. That's what Jeremiah said. If we search for him with all our heart. So I'm just grateful to the Lord um, for that time that we have uh, coming to a close with him. But he gave me a word. Hallelujah. He gave me a word for every participant. And, and even if you didn't participate, I think you can still benefit from this word that God gave me. He wanted me to admonish us on how we come down. Because many times, you can read through the Bible, you can read through the Bible about how people went into encountering God and went into seeking him and went into um, having time with him and they came out and immediately carnality set in. Immediately the flesh rose up. Immediately things came against their behavior and the thing that they experienced, they didn't really manifest. So, um... I really just want us to really pay attention to how we're coming out of this thing. So I really believe God was also instrumental on when he allowed us to close out. Today is 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh God, thank you. And seven is the number of completion and perfection. So God has not only completed some things in us, huh, but he's perfected some things in us. Huh. He hasn't left us Un incomplete in areas and unperfected by the sacrifice. So I pray that he met you. I'm telling you, I had a, a, a time with him this morning uh, because I sensed the shifting in my spirit. Uh, I sensed there was a difference in my spirit. I sensed there was a move going on in me and I sensed things were happening in the spirit realm. I sensed the closeout. Uh, I sensed that God was saying this was a complete work. Uh, and so we just want to be careful how we come down because we don't want to lose this closeness and this union that we've had with him and this hunger and this drive that we've had seeking him. We don't have to stop. This is the great thing about God. We can't exhaust him. We can't know all there is to uh, know about him. We can't experience the fullness there is of God, but what we can do, huh, oh, is we can stay hungry. Huh? We can stay thirsty. Huh? We can stay in that passionate pursuit. Huh? We can run after him with everything we have huh? because, beloved, he's all we do have. Huh? Oh, because heaven and earth going to pass away, huh? but his word is going to stand forever. Huh? It's already been settled in the heavens, huh? so let his word be settled in us. Huh? Let 
this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let us pursue him. How you doing, man of God? God bless you for being on. We need to pursue him with everything he is as the deer panted for the water brook. So my soul must look, run after the Lord. I have to stay thirsty. So we want to keep our fire because the things that are coming in this age and in this hour that we're in, huh, we're going to need to be on fire for God huh, so that we don't get caught up in foolishness. We don't get caught up in carnality. We don't get caught up in fear because God wants to solidify our trust in him. Hey, how you doing, sis? He wants to solidify our faith in him. Huh? He wants to solidify that because he, we, he needs us to know that he's a trustworthy God, huh? that he's faithful in everything he says huh? and in everything he does. So I'm praying that God settles some things for you huh? during this 21 days. I'm praying huh? That he made concrete evidence uh, in your life that he is who he says he is and that he can do exactly what his word declares he can do. He wants to make sure that we trust him. We have to trust him because, beloved, for real, we can't trust anybody else. He gave you your job. If you have a job, he gave it to you. He can keep you on the job or he can move you from that place. God does everything. He's sovereign in our lives. If he allowed sickness to come in, he going to get the glory as he heals your body. So stay in faith because he's our healer. Jehovah Rapha is his name. He's a great wonder. He can't lie and he can't fail. He has to make sure sure we understand that because perilous times uh, are coming up, beloved. He doesn't want us to get fearful. You, you remember, uh, do you remember the children of Israel when all the plagues were going on in Egypt? They didn't suffer any of those plagues, beloved. Huh? He kept them in a place called Goshen. Huh? And that's what God wants to do for us spiritually. His children, if we'll stay in faith, huh? faith is our Goshen. Huh? It's the access to Goshen. Huh? It's our access to unlimited supply. Huh? It's our access to provision, protection. Everything we need huh, is in Goshen. So we need to stay in the faith, in that place of Goshen, our faith, place of faith, believing in God. So we've been doing a Bible study uh, every couple of weeks. We kind of get together with some people and we've been studying the altars of Abram. And when I was studying the altars of Abram, God gave me this revelation about how we come down out of, of, of great encounters with him. Now, Abram in Genesis 12, he had been a great encounter with God. I mean, he had called, he left his family, he left everything, and he went and he followed God to the place that God had for him. So when he gets to Bethel and Ai, he, he, builds, he builds God a altar. And there it says he called on the name of the Lord. Hello, Felicia. How you doing, sweetie? He said he called on the name of the Lord. Now, when you see those words called upon the name of the Lord, that means he asked God, can I have an encounter with you? Huh? He asked God, when, when we say, when you read that in scripture, he called upon the name of the Lord. What we're saying is, God, I want to know you. Huh? I want to encounter you. I want to know all there is that I can know about you. I want to seek you. I want to, I want to touch you within the spirit. So this is what he was saying. I want to encounter you, God. And so he did. He encounters God in this holy place. And then the spirit, then the scripture says that he got up from that and he went south. I don't know about you. But anytime you hear something, somebody say somebody went south, and I ain't talking about the southern states. South meant Egypt. Egypt represents bondage. It represents bondage. So he didn't go to a good place. Immediately after that, he left and he was driven by fear. He was driven by fear because of what he saw. He saw a famine in the land. He saw dryness. Now, some of us are in dry places. Huh? Oh, you might be surrounded by dry people or dry situations, but we can't be provoked by what we see. Don't we got to get out of the natural senses and not and stop being led by natural senses so that we can tap into the spirit of God. We just come out of a consecration. We got to stay in that place. 
spiritual discernment is needed. We can't go to natural senses because he was led by fear and fear allowed him to operate in deception. Uh, he gets down to Egypt and lies to Pharaoh. So we have to be careful, beloved, that we're not led by fear. We're not led. So watch your behavior when you come out of this thing. Uh, watch what tries to make you move in a certain way in your flesh uh, when we come out of this thing tomorrow. Then look at this, beloved, Moses. Moses up 40 days on the mountain with God. Come on, fasting and praying. God talking to him, revealing himself to him. He has this encounter with God that many of us wish we could have. He has this encounter and he starts saying, and God tells him, you need to get down from here because it's revelry going on in the camp. And he gets down from the mountain and Joshua says, oh, I hear, I hear a noise. It sounds like war. And he said, it ain't no war going on, huh? but the children of Israel are are." are are wreaking havoc in the land. They did being disobedient in so many words. So he goes and he takes the tablets, the law that God had written with his own hand and he gets angry. Oh, that's another operation of the flesh, beloved. We got to be careful. Be careful not to operate in anger because anger rests in the bosom of a fool. What happens is that we do foolish things. So he took the tablets and he threw them and he broke them. And then he took the, the uh, bull that they had resurrected that made and he ground it up into powder, threw it in the river, but made the children of Israel drink it. He did this out of anger. He wasn't that he asked God. He didn't pray about it. He didn't say, God, what you want me to do? How you want me to deal with them? No, he operated out of anger and frustration. Beloved, we're coming out don't operate in your flesh. Don't let anger rule you. Don't let it motivate you. Don't let it move you. And then there's Elijah. Oh God, the great man of God, the great prophet of God, the great voice of God, the great demonstrator of glory. But the scripture also says he is like a us with like passions. That means he's a man just like we are men and women. He's just like us. He has passions. And guess what happened to him? On Mount Carmel, after he told the people, he said, how long you going to uh, hop between two opinions? You hopping over here and you hopping over there. You need to make up your mind. If God is God, serve him. Huh? But if Baal is God, serve him. And a lot of us today need to make up our minds. Huh? If God is God, we need to serve him. Huh? But if Baal and whoever your Baal is, huh, is God, serve him. Huh? Make up your mind because we can't keep hopping to between two opinions. But guess what happened to him? After he builds the altar, repairs the altar and the Lord comes down and burns up the offering and burns up the rocks and burns, laps up the water. Great demonstration of the glory and the power of God was manifest on Mount Carmel. Huh? And then he kills all of Baal's prophets. Somebody told Jezebel what he did. Huh? And what happened? Fear. Fear came in. Fear is a great enemy in the body of Christ. Uh, and we got to deal with this. Uh, beloved, God told Jesus, said, don't fear man uh, who is able just to de uh, destroy your body but can't put it in hell. But fear God uh, because God is the one that can not only destroy your body, uh, but he can cast you into the pit of hell. Uh, he is the only one that we need to be afraid of. Uh, he is the only one that we need to fear. Uh, man, what can man do to us? Uh, if he kill us today, uh, beloved, absent from the body, uh, is present with the Lord. Uh, we just cross over in the glory. Uh, so we don't need to be afraid. Uh, we don't need to not operate in our gifts. Uh, we don't need not need not to up, uh, hold back our talents uh, and tell, not tell people about the goodness of the Lord uh, because we're afraid of their response. Beloved, that's not God. That's the fire. We need the fire. See, Jesus, uh, uh, John said, that Jesus would come and baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So I'm praying and I pray that you would receive that fire baptism during this 21 days uh, because we need the fire of God. Uh, we need the fire to burn up the works of the devil. Uh, we need the fire of God in our mouths uh, and in our bellies. Uh, so when we pray, uh, things happen. Uh, things are shaken. Uh, things are moved. Uh, enemies can't, can't stay. Uh, Heavy by my side. People are healed and delivered and set free because the fire of God rests on us. 
rests in us and operates through us. So what happened to Elijah? He ran off and then he wanted to commit suicide. Fear opened the door for depression. Beloved, come out that dark place. Come out of that. Put on that garment of praise. Put on the garment of praise. You can make an exchange with God. If you're heavy, if you're down, if you're feeling darkness around you, if you're oppressed, put on a garment of praise. Begin to think about the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. Think about how he saved you, how he keeps you, how he delivered you. Think about that he woke you up this morning and you got your right mind. You got the activities of your limbs. You got a refrigerator. You can go and get something to eat. Clothes on your back. You're not homeless, naked. Oh, you're not in peril. Beloved, we got so much to be thankful for. So much to give God praise for. So let's be careful of how we come down out of this thing. Out of any encounter with God, we need to be careful how we come out of it. So let's look at this, beloved. How are we going to maintain? How can we maintain what God has done in us and through us? Because it's, it's almost pointless for us to uh, receive such revelation and receive such impartation from the Spirit of God and receive such fire and cleansing and clarity of hearing the Spirit of God and then turn right back around uh, oh, to run after things that we left when we went on the fast. We can't do that, beloved. Amen, man of, man of God. Fear does open that door to depression. We got to put on that garment of praise. We don't want to revert to the past. We don't want to become who we were before 21 days ago. What we want to do is focus on what we did and maintain that so we can stay in this place. I like my fire. Huh? I like my fire. Matter of fact, I want more fire. Huh? I want more fire because here's what I want to see. Huh? I believe the Bible is true 100%. Huh? And the scripture tells me huh, that Peter's shadow, huh, he actually could walk past people huh, and his shadow brought deliverance. Huh? I don't know about any of you, but I want my shadow to bring deliverance to people. I don't know about any of you, but I want to take handkerchiefs from my bosom. I got some right here too. I've been praying over them. If I can find them right here. I've been praying over these handkerchiefs. I pray over them. I oil them up. I pray over them because I want to take these handkerchiefs and I want to be able to give them to people. And I want the demons to come out. I want healing to manifest in people's body. But it'll only happen if we're hungry. It'll only happen if we'll sacrifice. It'll only happen if we're willing to pay the cost to see the glory of God be revealed in us. You see, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he hasn't changed, beloved. We're just lazy. We just don't want to pay the cost. We just don't want to do what it takes. But he hasn't changed. But I'm hungry. I'm hungry for him. And that's the first thing we got to remember. Stay hungry, beloved. Don't lose your hunger for God. Don't lose your thirst. Don't lose your passion to seek after him with all your heart. Don't lose your passion. Don't lose your focus. Don't lose your determination. You were determined for 21 days to stop doing this and stop doing that so that you could seek after God. Don't lose that, beloved. Don't lose that hunger, that drive, and that passion. Then pick up a spiritual discipline this week. Pick it up for the rest of your life. Fast once a week. Fasting keeps us disciplined. It keeps us grounded. It keeps our ears open. It keeps us focused. It's helped Jesus said. Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast. So we need to stay in the place so that we can keep our focus and attention and our drive on him. Pick up that discipline, beloved. Let it be a weekly thing. Watch your actions. I've already told you that. Stay prayerful. Stay praying. Take extra time to pray. Have a set time that you meet him. Huh? Have a set time. Stick with it. Be committed to that time. And when he shifts your time, shift with him. Be spirit led. Be spirit. Listen to the spirit of God. Obey him quickly. Stop making excuses for not obeying him. Huh? Oh, he'll tell us to do something and then we got to say, oh, well, I need confirmation. We've been in this thing 10 and 12 years and we still talking about we need confirmation. You don't need no confirmation. Huh? You just need to obey God. Huh? I just need to do what he says huh? when I hear him speak to me. 
I don't need to make any more excuses. It's time out for that. It's no more for the season of excuses. It is the time to really obey God and to follow the leading of the spirit and to do everything he's calling us to do. Stay in the word, beloved. Stay rooted and grounded in the word of God. Stay there because it's the word that spirit and his life. The scripture tells us that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word. You want to encounter him? Open your Bible. He is the word of God. The word is spirit. It's alive. It'll find us where we are and it'll deal with our hearts, our will and our emotions. We need the word of God, beloved. We can't live without it. It's a discerner of our thoughts and intentions. So before we even get ready to do something, we need to read some word so we can see if we're doing it right. Or are we? do we have the wrong motive for what we're doing? Yes, indeed, fasting is a lifestyle. It is. It's a lifestyle that we have to have. As children of God, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to do what he did. What did he do? He prayed a lot. Jesus prayed a lot. Sometimes he prayed all night long. He prayed for hours. Early in the morning, he would get away from people and he would pray. And we need to emulate that. We need to get away from people. Turn your phone off. You're not going to miss anything. You can call them back. Turn it over. Don't bring it in the room with you and pray. You say, I can't focus. I can't concentrate when I'm praying. Beloved, maybe sometime you just need to speak in your prayer language for 15, 20 minutes so you can get rid of all the clutter in your mind. Uh, put some music on and go into worship and just begin to thank him and tell him how wonderful he is and tell him how holy he is. Tell him how awesome he is so that you can get your mind focused. Command your, command your mind to focus. Take authority over your flesh. This is what fasting helps do. So, beloved, these are the things we want to continue to do to maintain where we are and to go higher. If the Spirit of God leads you to do a fast, do it. Don't wait for other people. Don't wait for your pastor. Don't make your pastor always have to tell you to fast, beloved. Be disciplined enough to hear the Spirit of God and obey Him. This lifestyle is not about being ple pleased all the time. Huh? It's about sacrifice. Paul said he had much fasting. He said, I die, I die so that the life of Christ can live in me. So we have to die to our flesh so Christ can live in us and operate through us. Let me pray for you. I'm going to get off of here, but I wanted to pray for you. I want if you if you benefit from this from this 21 days, I thank God for everybody that was on here. And I pray that you did benefit. If you want to share something, feel free to post it. Say you, you were blessed, whatever. But uh, uh, but you and God, that's really between y'all. I pray you were blessed. I pray it was a help to you. I pray that you learned something about yourself that you can actually do this. You can do this. It's not as hard as we make it. We just have to be disciplined. We have to learn to deny ourselves and tell ourselves no. Amen. I love y'all. Let me pray for you. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for being led by you into this fasting season. We thank you because you kept us. You brought us. Huh? You imparted wisdom to us. You gave us revelation, knowledge, and truth. God, you sat with us. Huh? Oh, God, you filled us with your spirit. You filled us afresh. You filled us anew. You broke chains. Huh? Oh, you're the chain breaker. You're the deliverer. Huh? You're the healer. God, you did huh? marvelous works, and we thank you. Huh? Now we seal this fast, God, huh? by your blood. Huh? We bind the works of the enemy huh? and all retaliatory spirits, huh? all spirits of retribution, payback, vengeance. Huh? We bind them in the name of Jesus, huh? and we forbid them from accessing any of those that fasted, God. Huh? We forbid it. We put a bloodline huh? and a hands of protection around the people of God. Huh? We thank you, Lord, for unity in the body. Huh? I pray you got much glory, God. Huh? I pray there was advancement huh, in the kingdom of God because of this. Huh? I pray, God, huh, that your people will put a, have a hunger and a thirst to seek after you more and more and more. Huh? God, I pray it would drive us huh, to the cross, huh, that it would drive us to fast, huh? drive us to seek you, huh? 
drive us to beg, oh God, and plead with you on the behalf of this world that you would have mercy, that you would raise up intercessors even in this time period, oh God, that many heard the call and that they will obey you, Holy Spirit, and they will answer the call with fasting, with weeping, and that there will be many Anna's birth in this season and that we would know the times and the seasons that we are in and that we would stand up and rise up, oh God, as people of God and get in our strategic places and that we would cry loud and spare not so that the word of God can be made manifest in the earth. God, we want your glory. We want your glory to be revealed in the earth. Oh, God, we want your glory to be made manifest in the earth. We thank you. We thank you for using us. We thank you for choosing us. We thank you for walking in us and working through us. Now, not unto us, oh, God. Not unto us, but unto you be the glory. Unto you be the honor. And unto you be all the praise. We bless your high name, God. And we give you great glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, I love y'all with the love of Jesus. God bless you, Prophetess Gwen. God bless you. I love y'all with the love of Jesus. I pray that you were blessed during this time. I pray if your deliverance, your healing, whatever you were looking for during this time period hasn't made been manifest, I pray tonight uh, that the angels of the Lord uh, that carry healing would visit you uh, as you sleep and as you slumber uh, and whatever it is that wasn't done during this 21 days uh, that tonight would be a culmination for you uh, and that you would experience the glory of God uh, as you lay on your bed uh, and uh, as you lay on your bed uh, that the angels of the Lord would minister to you uh, and that you would experience the goodness and the mercy and the glory of God I love y'all I pray I pray for y'all all the time be encouraged, beloved. Jesus loves us. He is for us. And if he's for us, he's more than the world against us. Stay in faith. God bless you.